what's up guys welcome back to the final episode of the tower defense game series this is part 10 we're going to be adding finishing touches and polishing our game to make it ready for you to share so let's get started first of all we have a bug if i set wave to four to start with when many of these come around to a corner the balloons will actually go multiple costumes ahead when hit by a bullet instead of only moving to the next one so the way to prevent this from happening is to go into events drag in a wait until or sorry, control, await until after this right here where it detects touching one of the bullets. And then just duplicate this and then go into operators, drag in a knot, and there we go. So that'll fix that bug. Awesome. The next thing I want to do is make it so that the turrets only shoot when there are balloons on the path. So if we're in the buy portion of our game and we place down turret two, let's put it right here. We don't want it to shoot right now. We only want it to shoot when the balloons are there. So we're going to create a variable to keep track if there are balloons or not. We're going to call it balloons alive with a question mark for all sprites. That's important. And I misspell that. Whoops. So let's go into our balloon. And there's going to be a couple places we're going to need this. So first of all, before we delete the clone here, we want to set balloons alive to false. And then before we s delete the clone right here, we want to set it to false. But then right here, after moving in this repeat until, we want to set it to true. We can set balloons alive to false when we start. This will make it so that it'll only turn true when the balloons are there. So as you can see here, it's true. But then, for example, if we stop the game and there, it's false. All right, so the way we're going to actually use this is go into our turret. So let's start with turret one. And let's see where we are spawning bullets. So that's right here. So you actually only want to do whatever is inside this forever loop if there are balloons. So the way to check that is we're going to drag in an if around that and drag in an equal sign. And then here we're going to say true. And as you may guess, we're going to use our newly created variable balloons alive and put it on the left side. We're going to do a similar thing in turret two. So if we just go into uh, control, drag in that if statement. And then we can actually just copy it from here. We can say if balloons alive, and let's zoom in really quickly, equals true. Only then should we do what's inside this forever loop. And then we're going to do the same thing for the third turret. So right here we're spawning, and we're going to bring an if around here. Copy this equals. And then we're going to say if balloons alive equals true. So let's see if this actually works. So in our shop, let's bring in a turret three, for example. And as you can see, it won't shoot. However, when the balloons start to spawn, it will. Awesome, that's great to see. And let's quickly go ahead and hide the variable called balloons alive because that is not important. Okay, the next thing we want to do is only open the shop if balloons alive equals true. Because what may happen is you may have balloons coming in after a round has ended, and you'll be able to do the trick where, as we discussed earlier, uh, you can open your shop, bring in a turret, and use it and kill all the uh, balloons in the path. So the way to prevent this from happening is to not say if mode equals buy, but rather if balloons, equal, if balloons alive equals false. So as you can see now, we can do this, but it'll still work where if we start the wave, it'll tell us that alert. Okay, awesome. The next thing to do is add a couple more balloon types. So then when we're spawning our balloons in the code right here, it'll pick those other costumes when the wave gets to that level. So for example, in wave seven, it'll show all our seven costumes as part of the wave. All right, awesome. The next thing I want to do is add icons for these variables. So first of all, let's double click all of these. And then I have already created one, a costume. So I'm going to create a new sprite and I'm going to import that or upload variable icons. So we can bring that in. And yeah, if we move this to the upper right hand corner, you can see that if we align, it looks a lot better. And so this shows what wave we're on, this shows how much money we have, and this shows the lives left. So in our backdrop, let's change these. So first of all, we want wave to start at one, 
and we want money to start at 50. Okay, the next thing we wanna do is add grass because the green is a little bit boring. So what I've done is also created those costumes and I'm just gonna upload them here. And we're going to add grass one. And we're going to upload grass two as well. And the only difference is that one has three spikes and the other has two. So if we delete this, let's go into our code. When flag is clicked, repeat seven. That's just a random number, but it, it seems right. And we're going to create clone of myself. When I start as clone, we are going to drag in a pick random. But in our looks, we're going to drag in a switch costume too. And then we can switch to a random costume between one and two. We're then go, going to go to back layer because we want these to go to the very back, just like that. And the next thing we wanna do is show because up here we're going to have hidden the original spawner. And then we want to set ghost effect to 80 and we're going to go to a random position. And yeah, so let's see how that looks. So as you can see, we have this random grass spawned all over our path and the grass, which looks amazing. And if we click the green flag again, it goes to a different position and on and on. All right, awesome. So the next thing we wanna do is make it so that every time you complete a wave, you get a certain amount of money. So let's go into our balloon where we're spawning all the balloons. So the way to do this is fairly simple. All we have to do is drag in a change money buy. And then we're gonna bring in a couple operators. We're gonna bring in the multiply and then bring that and duplicate it twice. In the first two slots, we're going to use uh, the wave variable and we can duplicate this and bring it here. And then we're gonna bring in 10. So all this is doing is it's saying the higher the wave, the more money we are going to give the player. So the next thing we want to do is handle the game over. So we're gonna create a new sprite and I'm going to paint it with you guys this time. Okay, so once we have this costume created, let's go into code and let's create a few scripts. So the first one is going to be, so when flag is clicked, we're going to hide this sprite and then we're going to say forever if, and then we're gonna drag in a less than sign if health is less than one. Then we're all we're gonna do is go to, and we'll go to, let's see, what's the right? Uh, zero, zero is fine. For now, what we're gonna say next is go to front layer, which is gonna be in Lux, and then we want to stop all. And after putting that stop all, we want to drag in a show right before there, just so that the user can actually see the costume. So let's see if that works. Let's set health to one to start with and then let's see if it works. All right, awesome. So the screen is showing up and that's great to see. The next thing we wanna do is add a highest level cloud variable. And so this will show what is the highest level anyone has gotten to. So we're gonna make this a cloud variable and it's gonna be called highest wave, not level. And so let's set highest wave to zero, but what we're going to do here is say if, and let's drag in that right here. So let's do it after, and we're gonna say if, and then drag in a greater than, and if our current wave is greater than our highest wave, then set the highest wave to our current wave. And that'll keep track of the highest wave you achieved. So first of all, let's go through it again. And we wanna make it so that the highest wave variable is shown right here. So the way we want to hide that is say when flag is clicked right here, we want to hide it. And then here we want to show. Awesome. So we actually have one last bug to fix. And if you take a look, if we open our shop and place a couple turrets, so let's place one looking here, let's place another here, let's place one up here. And if we start the wave, you can see that the directions of the turrets are kind of messed up. So look right here and you can see that sometimes the direction will go there. 
So the problem is with our variable. So let's go into our turret. And we have this turret direction variable. And we have to actually delete it, unfortunately. And we're going to delete it there. And all we're going to do is create the variable, but this time we have to remember to make it for this sprite only. And that's something we forgot about. So, so right here, we need to set turret direction to our direction, which we can find in motion. So then in our bullet clone, what we need to do is point in the direction and the turret direction variable we gave it. We have to do this for all the turrets. So if I go into turret two, we'll delete this. And we're going to create a new one called turret direction. But remember to make it for this sprite only. And so as you may guess, when we spawn the bullet, we want to point in direction turret direction. But then right here, we want to set turret direction to direction like this. All right, and we want to do the same thing for the third turret. So in variables, delete turret direction once again, create a new variable called turret direction, make sure it's for this sprite only. And then right here, we want to set turret direction to direction, which we're going to find in motion once again. And then when we spawn, we want to point in direction and then bring in that variable called turret direction. So now if we hide these variables in all of our turret sprites and we full screen once again, let's see if it's still bugged out. So if I place one here and I place another here and I place another here, all in different directions, as you can see, now they'll all follow the direction that they were given. So that's the bug fixed. And yeah, that's going to be it. Congratulations on making your way through all 10 parts of this series. Well done. I will be leaving the full game walkthrough linked in the comments. And let me know if you have any questions. Comment, subscribe, hit the like button. And I hope to see you in my next series. See you guys later. Peace out.